Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is June 10th, 2021. And our topic for this evening is acceptance. So last week we talked about uh, last the topic last week was radiant kingdom, the radiant kingdom. And it roughly is about how we create with our minds, the, the thoughts that we perceived and hold as um, really true or, or we believe we believe in as our reality sets up the framework that we use to create our experiences. So this week I kind of want to continue on to talk about how we influence our creations. We can create positively, um, meaning that we there's um, one way of creating is really by actively pursuing what it is that we want to experience. For example, if I like to have, um, let's say, a piece of cake, then I can either go bake one myself or I can go out, you know, actually have to go out and, and get a piece of cake. So that is what I mean by actively pursuing. <clears throat> Or we can create our experience by rejecting our own creation. So what do I mean by that then? For example, I have, um, I can give a couple of examples to, to illustrate this. So one of them is that I have this tightness in my shoulder that has been bothering me for um, quite a while now. You know, it is a condition that I am pretty sure I created myself because, you know, uh, my shoulder is attached to me. I, it's not like I've lent it to somebody and they, they used it and broke it and then um, return it to me. So it's, it's something that is, I'm part of my body. And so I am totally responsible for that creation. However, that does not mm, make it uh, any, easier for me to resist having this experience of tight shoulders. I like, so, and then another example I can, I can give is my relationship with my mom. I think if you, uh, if you remember, um, if you actually know me and, and listen to any of, or, or um, some of my other podcasts, you would have kind of um, caught the drift that um, my relationship with my mother uh, was um, really a, a growth point, let's say. So I would love to have a mutually supportive relationship with my mom, but my mom and I have very different points of view. And I find it tough to support most of her opinions and she feels the same way about my opinions. So I can resist all I want about uh, concerning my relationship with my mom. And then I can actually give one more example and, and that is more on a, um, I would say macro scale, which really is the, the, um, the virus that we've been, the, the situation that we've been experiencing for the last year or so. So all of these things, um, at first, I would resist it. And just because I resisted, for example, um, like some of the, the reason why I, I resist the, the shoulder, not, not only that it, it um, it gives me some discomfort, but also that it reminded me that my body somehow is failing me. And also I resist the idea of getting old. It sucks because I never had this, my shoulder was never sore when I was young, younger. Um, well, yes, there are times when I really um, overextended myself, but you know, my body would just bounce back very uh, usually it takes me at most a day or two and I would be back to new but you know not anymore so I can I can blame I can resist I can I can say um, I can reject 
my body and I can res resist getting this phenomenon of getting older and all of that. I can, I can blame my mom for being so ignorant or I can blame the virus for existing at all. So this, these are the things that we, or at least I resist. However, the more I resist though, the more I am giving power to the situation into my experiences and that the more I would be keeping those experiences and situations in place. And that really is how energy works. Energy goes where our attention goes. Even if those attention is um, a negative attention. So resistance is still attention. Whether I actively pursue something, which is I, um, the, the attention is to going towards something or the attention is moving away from something. It is still, I'm still placing attention on that situation. And because that's how energy works, whatever you, you put your attention on, it keeps it in place. So then acceptance really is the first step in reclaiming our own attention, reclaiming our own energy. Accepting what is, it's, um, it's, um, well, kind of when you think of it, it, it is really, um, it's ludicrous or it's it's funny if if I try to tell somebody that oh I I resist and I resist to or, or I resist to um, the the pain in my shoulder I resist that my body is failing me I resist that I'm getting older and and if you really think about it it is. It is funny because my shoulder is having some, giving me some feedback. It is, it is a fact. It is not good, not bad. It is a fact. So resisting something that I have created, it's, it's really, um, and, and it's, it's like, resisting getting older um well it's it's not just resisting getting older because you know age is just a number but it's if you think about it it is really resisting all the um let's say all the other things that comes with getting older because we somehow believe that a certain age is older and a certain age is young we seem we seem to think that that let's say 60 meaning that you are getting older whereas when you are 30 or when you are five you're not old enough so it is to think that a particular age is better or worse is how we have perverted this experience because each experience, each age comes with its own um, experiences and new things. It's, it's like I would never trade what it is that I know now in order to... Um, go back to a, a younger me, because I know that when I was 30 years old, for example, that's so many things. I, I have a lot of other things that I really have not um, looked into. And um, um, there's still a lot of things that I have not grown into myself yet. So from that point of view, I would never want to trade a certain age in order to feel that. So it really reminds me that, that what's behind this, this 
um, tightness in my shoulder that's giving me some pain is also all the other beliefs that is supporting that, you know, when you're at a certain age, your body would start to fail. And that's not true. There are people that are my age or maybe even older who don't have this. So then when I think of all those things, then how I feel about this tightness in my shoulder is simply an excuse. It is from the point of view of um, understanding my own creation is that before I had this, before I created this reality of my shoulder being tight and giving me some pain, is that I already have bought into the, the, the belief system that when I'm a certain age, my body would fail and I would not um, be able to bounce back. And that um, being a certain age is not advantageous, that the, it's, it's somehow it's not good. So all of these things is, is really contributing to how I have created this. And that each time we create a situation for each time I, I for example, just creating this, this tight shoulder for myself to experience is that there is a story and behind that stories, there are many steps. This, my shoulder did not become this level of tightness to the extent that I start to feel some pain in it. Um, it did not happen overnight. There is a long drawn out process. And, and so there is a story behind it. And the story, some of them I totally remember because I remember being, you know, in my teens and I was carrying books around because I was too lazy to go back to my uh, locker to, you know, just get the book for one class that I decided to carry around. You know, for the morning, I would carry at least like three sets of heavy books. You know, those, those textbooks that used to weigh um, at least five, 10 pounds each. And I would carry the, all, the, all the classes that I have in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I would carry all the classes in the afternoon. So I've been carrying those books on, on one particular shoulder a lot of the times. And then as I get older and started to work, and there are times that, that I need to carry around a laptop with me. So laptops in those days, really, they weigh quite, um, they, they are quite heavy. So I have been favoring one particular shoulder over the other. So, in, and so day in, day out, um, like all of these things kind of added, is, is added into my creation story of this, of this tight shoulders. And then that's just a physical part of it. There is also the emotional and the, the, the more mental part of it is that the, I, I also remember that is about um, you know, not getting support, not supported as well. In that I have to, um, I believed in really working hard. So even when I um, go home, I would carry my laptop with me in order to convince myself that I would be doing some work at home. Even when I'm done work, I'm not done work. So all of these different um, stories really added on to my creation of the experience that I have now of my shoulders. And as long as I resist this experience, as long as I resist my own creation of this shoulder, it actually made it very difficult for me to find out what was the 
what was the um, the creation story behind it because I remember when I first um, started to deal with my shoulder I did not remember all the things that that I've and all the uh, especially I don't remember all the mindsets all the internal dialogue that I have put in in order to gradually create this story for myself, create this experience for myself. And once when I was able to let go of resisting this experience and really start to um, pay attention to how my body reacts, what what are some of the circumstances that is that makes me tightens my shoulder because it's a it's really because my um, persistently tightening my shoulders the the my reaction to stress that I didn't pay much attention to and even when I am not in a stress situation because I was not very aware of my own body. I was rather disconnected with my body. And that's why even when I was not stressed, my body is still, my muscles are still holding the attention. I did not um, do, I did not really let go of the tension in my, in my shoulders. And so when you do when you hold your pos your your body in a certain position for a long period of time, your body is going to react and give you some feedback. So, so it is just when I was able to let go of resisting, that's when I was able to um, pay attention, to really be more aware of what's happening with this shoulder, you know, what's happening. What's the, the internal dialogue? What situation am I reacting to? So when I was able to understand how I created this and who I was, what frame of mind that supported me to um, keep this creation going, when I start to be more aware of it, I was able to start to discreate it. Because when I stop resisting, I start to recover more of the unconscious part of how I have created the situation for myself. And when I was able to um, recover the unconscious part, I become able to discreate it step by step. So some of the things that I've done to start to discreate it is really um, making a choice to not carry a big load with just on one shoulder. I have switched to using um, a backpack where the, the load is distributed to both my shoulders more evenly. And also, instead of trying to do everything and carry everything by myself is, I ask for help. It's not something that I'm comfortable doing. However, it's, I didn't know that I don't, I don't like asking for help. <clears throat> so this, this just letting go and really accepting that I have the situation, allow me to become um, more aware that I have this problem of asking for help. And also I process my, my one of my internal beliefs that I'm not supported this, this, this belief. So when I start to process that, um, some other conversations and internal dialogue comes up and I process those until I get to the part where I am um, like I 
that those beliefs, those beliefs that support me to have this experience of a, a tight shoulder starts to be discreated, you know, also take other steps, for example, like um, making sure that I take magnesium regularly so that it helps my, my body to be able to relax the muscles. And I exercise my shoulders to release tension. And all of those things, step by step, is when I, once I was able to accept what already is, just be able to accept that. I was able to get to the point where I can take steps to discreate it. So acceptance is key. Acceptance is the first step. Accepting what is and accepting every step and details that has contributed to the creation of a particular situation. And acceptance is not compliance, nor is it a resignation. It's simply acknowledging what is, the existence of what is. Um, and once you uh, accept it, once you have that acceptance, it frees up your energy so that you now has extra energy that you can start to discreate and know more of what's contributing to creating all of that. And you can start to take other, um, to, to create a, a, a reverse situation so that you can back out of your creation and start to discreate it. And so this is really the gift of acceptance. And before, without accepting something, you would be in the mode of um, resisting. You'll be in the mode of assigning blame, being angry and, and feeling powerless and all of those things, which really tied up your your energy and does not allow you to refocus yourself to find solution rather than to um, have all your attention tied up in resisting. So when you are able to go into looking at the creation story and then going to dissolve each and every one of the components that supported the creation and to start dismantling it. And at the same time as well, you also consciously create something that you truly want to experience. So all of this is really steps that we can do to make life, like, like to, to really be um, more consciously aware of our own creation. And this can be done on an individual basis. It can be done on something that is physical, like having a shoulder, or it can be something that is more non-physical, like a relationship with, some, with someone um, or relationship with a situation, or even on a global level, let's say the virus. And, and so the virus and our government's response to it, all of this, has created a situation that each of us has to deal with. And regardless of how we feel about it, we, we cannot deny, we cannot resist that it is, it is happening, it is something. And we also have to understand that, you know, collectively, it's a collective creation because this is something that affects um, each countries, it may affect each country very differently. And so that's, however, it affected each country in some ways. And because 
it's a collective creation. So we all have to have our own process, work on our own process of accepting what is being put in front of us. And then also to go behind once we once we let go of resisting this lockdown and all of this, then we can start to look at what went into co-creating this experience for everyone. And one of the, the reasons why we have co-created this is because this is the this is the two world split. So this is how we as a collective decided to, to do this two world split because um, collectively on a very unconscious level, I would say, uh, well, for some people it's unconscious, for, for others it's more of a conscious process is that we, we know that this um, the system that we have now is not supporting humanity to move up to the next level. So we know we have to discreate it. We just have no idea how to discreate it collectively. And so one of the ways that um, collectively we decided is to create the situation. So we each have to do our own process of accepting, letting go of the beliefs, the habits, what have we invested in to support the old systems. And then um, once we kind of have done enough internal reflection, which I think we, we're getting to the point where we had at least a year to go within. Most of us had that um, opportunity to really slow down, go within, to process all that we, um, that is still internal and let go of all the, the, the belief system habits that we still have within us that's supporting to keep the old system alive. And, and then after that, then we also have to collectively, however, individually as well, is to create new structures in our own lives that is more in tune with the vibration of the new earth that we are going into. And also to come together to support other people who are creating um, new structures, new systems that is going to benefit everyone that fits into the new vibration. So each creation, each new creation is at the same time a destruction of something that is old and also a readjusting of creating something that is new. So this is all that I want to talk about in terms of acceptance, because acceptance is, is really the turning point. It's no matter um, what it is that you, you're trying to create, unless of course, if there you are trying to do something that um, let's say you you just you don't have well actually come to think of it a creation is always hmm, well okay I can't really say always but um, it seems to be that it is usually when we are creating something 
that we are creating something to tick in place of something that's already existing. So in that sense, a creation, a new creation is always accompanied by a destruction as well, a discreation process. And acceptance is one of the best ways to start creation, is to start our understanding of and reclaiming of energies that we have used in order to um, create the old one and redirecting those energies to create a new one. And that's all I have to say about acceptance. <laughs>